This circuit is a combination volume and tone control modeled after the classic Fender Princeton design. Now the one meg pot on the left controls the overall volume, adjusting how much of the signal passes from the input to the output. The tone section here on the right uses another one meg pot along with two capacitors, a 470 picofarad, and a 47 nanofarad. The smaller cap allows the high frequencies to pass through while the larger one rolls off the highs to the ground. Turning the tone control blends between the two paths, giving either a brighter or more bass heavy sound. Now on this particular enclosure, I've added a double pole, double throw switch, which lets me remove the tone circuit entirely. When the switch is on, the circuit works just like the Fender style tone control. And when it's off, only the volume control remains active. This gives me the option to bypass the tone section completely for a hotter, cleaner signal, which is handy for some of my experimental circuits where the tone network can sometimes pull the signal down too much. Here's where a circuit like this can come in handy. Here I am over on the test amp where I've got the seven pin test harness that we just finished. I also have a dual triode cathode follower which feeds into an EL84 speaker driver. Depending on the order that I have the cathode follower or buffer circuit the volume and tone, and the seven pin universal gain stage, I can completely change the character of the total amplifier. As it is right now, I have the universal gain stage going into the volume and tone control, which then goes into the buffer or cathode follower into the EL84 speaker driver. <laughs> Watch what happens when I reverse the position of the cathode follower and the universal gain stage. seems pretty simple just swapping two amplifier modules but watch what happens when we move the volume and tone control between the stage preceding the speaker driver
All right, for my third experimental setup here, I'm first going into the universal gain stage. From there, I'm coming directly into the cathode follower to act as a buffer, and then I'm taking the output of that into the volume and tone control, which then feeds into the EL84 speaker driver. Give that a second to warm up. configuration since the first gain stage feeds directly into the cathode follower it tends to not really want to clean up it's really difficult to try to get a clean sound I've got the volume backed off to about the nine o'clock position over there <laughs> the volume and the tone control both in the one o'clock position. Now the bypass switch allows me to take the tone control completely out of the equation so now I'm just running the volume part of the circuit control doesn't do anything. This can be good if I have a more complicated circuit up here. If I've got too many things padding down the signal in between because I've got a uh, resistor uh, across the output, I've got the volume control and the tone control, every single one of those resistors in parallel gradually pulls the signal down so it it gets rid of a lot of the higher gain potential. So it won't make your guitar or your amp sound like spaceships or anything, but this winds up being a fairly handy little device, especially when you're cobbling together something like this in a completely experimental kind of setup. So all in all, this may not be the most exciting piece of equipment that I've showed you guys, but things like this, a simple volume and tone control where I can optionally remove the tone control from the circuit, it gives me options when I'm dealing with stuff like these test modules over here. And ultimately what I'm trying to do is come up with an arrangement of tubes that I can use to redesign the old Imperial radio into a functional guitar practice amp. I don't expect it's going to be nearly as loud since I'm pushing 212s right now, but I should at least be able to come up with a passable sound using that dingy little three inch speaker. And redesigning that tube radio into a guitar amp is really the ultimate goal of all of the videos in this series. So if you're digging this kind of experimental amp creation, do consider subscribing to the channel. I'd appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you guys for the next round of experimentation building an amplifier. All right, check you guys next time.